Now, in this segment, we'll look at a sample main program for our <coughs> standard I.O. knockoff library. And we'll look at our version of the two most sophisticated functions in standard I.O., fscanf and fprint. Let's start with alt standard I.O. test.c. Alt fprintf and alt fscanf provide limited implementations of the fprintf and fscanf functions from standard I.O., which you should review. We'll look at their code in a moment, but First, let's look at the alt standard IO test.c file in the notes here to see some example calls of them. My apologies, by the way, for the small font in the notes. It's a lot of code to fit in. In fact, we're not even going to put the alt printf, fprintf function in there because um, it only needs brief discussion. Uh, but you can draw that from um, the supplied source files when you need to. Now, the um, simple program here uses alt fprintf to prompt for a name and a count on lines 9 through 10, and then an alt f scanf to uh, read them in on line 11. We're passing the alt standard out and alt standard in pointers to them, so that these calls are a little bit like standard IO's f print f on standard out and f scanf on standard in, which in turn are, of course, really having the same effect as a printf and a scanf call. Now, pay special note to these three lines. They're a simple prompt and reply, but they illustrate an issue we'll look at further on. Now, the 12 through 18 loop reads and sums a series of integers equally in number to count. It runs count times. And lines 19 through 20, then, print the total and then ask if another try is desired. And line 21 scans a one-letter reply skipping the white space before the character. That's format string space percent C there. And if the scan is successful, has a return value of 1, and if the answer is Y, then the process repeats. So now let's take a look at the code for these, uh, these two functions. Alt F print F is easy. It's a near duplicate of the Alt print F function from the lectures on variadic parameters, which you should go and review if you need to. The only significant change is that uh, alt f printf takes an alt file parameter pointer and does alt putsy calls to it when output is needed instead of doing put care calls. Alt f scanf, by contrast, has several points of interest and it is brand new. So we'll be looking at that more closely. Alt f scanf. Now, you're in a position to decipher much of this code by using the lecture thus far and your prior knowledge of variadic functions. And I'll ask you to do so with a series of upcoming in-lecture questions. But first, let's discuss a couple of design issues in this function. Line 128 gets the next character of input before we even know what format specifiers are in the format string. And in general, alt scanf must read one character ahead in order to parse input. For instance, it can't know when an int, handled by specifier percent %i here, uh, can't know when that's done until it reads the first non-digit character after the int. And it can't know when a white space delimited string, specifier percent %s, is done until it reads the first white space after the string. So throughout alt f scanf, we assume we've already read the next character and that it's in sim, and we will always read one character too far. And then as you can see, way down on line 182, we will finally unget see it back into the input when we're done with the scanf. Now, variable matched in fscanf here counts the number of format specifiers thus far successfully matched. And OK remains true, or 1, as long as no errors have been encountered. Remember that fscanf, which we're imitating, returns the number of format specifiers successfully matched, or returns EOF. So with these points in mind, here are a few questions on the main loop. And don't worry about lines 125 through 126 yet, by the way. We'll, we'll get back to those. So question one, um, the params pointer is uh, advanced throughout the function, and that is, of course, a uh, 
VA list up here. In fact, it advances by exactly the same number of bytes on each execution of the line 141 switch. Look through the code and tell me why that is true. And coming back from a pause, and because all the variadic parameters are pointers, be sure you see that every VA arg call in here, uh, let's see there, and uh, there's another one there, and uh, third one up there, every VA arg call fetches a pointer of some sort from the parameter list. And of course, all pointers have the same size in bytes. Question two, what is the significance of the asterisk applied to the VAR calls on line, uh, for instance, 135 here or on line uh, 149 there? Coming back from a pause there, those calls return a pointer parameter and we must dereference the pointer to assign scanned values into its target. Question three. Does Alt F scan F skip leading white space when reading a character per specifier percent C? And again, reading the code, you should be able to see the branch where percent C is being handled. What line of code indicates whether it does or doesn't skip white space? And answer the same question for reading a string per specifier percent S. Does it skip leading white space? And what lines of code indicate this? The answer three. Well, consistent with the F scan F spec, Alt F scan F doesn't skip leading white space for percent C. Line 135 assigns the next care into the target of the associated care star regardless of its content. But lines 156 through 157 down in the percent S code do skip white space before reading a string. So question four, why do we do another alt get C call on line 136, given that the character was already assigned on line 135? Again, coming back from a pause, this is for consistency with the other switch branches and the alt unget C on line 182. Every format specifier results in a character too many being read. And we always assume sim contains the next unused input character. Question five, well, what if the format string itself contains a space? Not the input, the format string. Does that have any effect on the scanning process? And what lines cause the effect, if so? And uh, returning from a pause there, uh, lines 173 through 175, as you can see here, cover this case. And the effect is to skip any white space in the input. This is consistent with the F scan F spec. Space in the format string causes white space in the input to be skipped. Now, this makes no difference for format specifiers like percent %s and percent %i, which already skip leading white space. But in both Alt F scan F and F scan F, there is an important difference between format string percent %c and space percent %c. The latter will skip leading space, leading white space, uh, before reading the character. So question six, what happens if the format string includes non-blank, non-format specifier content? For instance, what if we use a format specifier of uh, hello percent %i? And what lines, again, enforce this? Well, the answer, Alt F scan F will expect the non-specifier text to be matched exactly in the input. The input will have to be literally hello, followed by optional white space and then an integer. And lines 176 through 177 enforce this, requiring the next symbol to match the format character if the character is not a space or a format specifier. And question seven. If Alt F scan F is called Alt F scan F standard in and just a blank format string, one space in the format string, and if it immediately hits EOF, does it return EOF or does it return zero? There are no format specifiers requested, just a blank, and yet it hit end of file immediately. Trace the code exactly to justify your answer. Again, coming back from a pause. Well, starting with line 128, 
This will immediately hit EOF, and SIM will be set to EOF. Lines 174 to 175 will then attempt to skip white space, but the loop will not execute at all. It will be immediately false, so SIM will not change. Line 180 will advance the format string, or format pointer, to point to the terminating null of the format string. So the main loop then exits, and it will have OK equals 1, but matched equals 0, but SIM is equal to EOF. And if you look through the rather elaborate return condition on 184, that test then is false, and the line will then return EOF. Question 8. Look at lines 9 through 11 in altstudio.c and at lines 125 through 126 in alt f scan. Let's see if we can get those here. There's 125, 126, the ones we said we'd get back to. And lines 9 through 11, the ones I said to uh, think carefully about earlier. Why are the alt f scan f lines? needed in order for the alt standard IO test prompt and reply to work properly. What would go wrong without them? Coming back from a pause, the line 9 through 10 prompt here would be buffered and not necessarily appear on screen as a prompt until much later when sufficient output into the alt standard out buffer caused an alt f flush call. Now, normally, buffering, output buffering is invisible to a human user, even for screen output, because the program runs so quickly. But when the program pauses for a typed input, any content buffered for standard output must be flushed to be visible. The standard IO scanf and other input functions have similar logic, forcing a flush of the standard out buffer before doing their input. And um, final question, number nine to be sure you have followed the logic of the percent %i handler in alt -f -scan -f. What would it take to handle a percent %o format specifier? And that reads an integer in octal. Um, how would it differ from the percent %i handler? And coming back from a pause there, it would be almost identical, really. Um, the only thing that would differ is that we would insist that the digits be from 0 up to less than or equal to 7, and that we multiplied by 8 here in the um, process by which we progressively increase the place value of what we've got so far before adding in the next digit. And that's it. The rest of the code would be the same for percent %o as for percent %i. Now, that wraps up our discussion, then, of an alternate uh, implementation of the uh, standard I.O. library.